Right, so thank you for clicking. This is going to be an interesting video. It's going to highlight something that's going to be kind of a fun little project that we're going to do for the entire summer. So you're going to want to stick around, listen to this. I know a man with a whiteboard means you're going to probably listen to some sort of sales pitch. Hmm. Not today. because we aren't going to talk about Fortnite, little comments and messages, workout scenarios, not any of that today. So let's give it a, a quick spray. Yes. And a nice little wipe. Start from scratch. Bye bye Fortnite. Oh boy. Wow, who put this up so high? Okay, we are ready. Just about ready. Give that a quick dry. All right, guys. Let's dive right into it. Let's get right to it. So, what's this all about? A few weeks ago, I was uh, privileged enough to be part of a, a group of guys that get interviewed by BJ or Brick House Builds. He made this great video about how or why some people like us enjoy buying motorcycles, fixing them up if they need fixing, and then moving them on. Uh, the reason why I do that is pretty simple. I really enjoy motorcycles. I, I'm not specific to just one kind. And I like to kind of get out and feel, you know, the power, the experience of all different kinds of motorcycles. And from that came a learning experience for me. Because I wasn't a very good mechanic. I'm still not a good mechanic. Um, I get tripped up on things all the time. And uh, as we started moving these bikes, a little bit of cash was generated. So we're starting to build some revenue. So going into year two, I thought, well, this would be a fantastic thing if we could buy enough bikes, move them along, to buy ourselves an enclosed trailer. Well, we've done that. And so this year, 2024, we're gonna have a plan. We're gonna document this throughout the entire season. We're gonna walk through step-by-step step on the bikes that we get to use in this little program for the summer. We're gonna have a goal. And we're going to talk about, we might even bring you along when we go and take a look at these deals. Now, back four years ago when we started this channel, I had a bit of seed money. If you're like me and you're married, you got to, you know, make the proposal, take it to the wife, you know, have a demonstration, similar to what we're doing right now, like a presentation, and explain to her it's a win-win. It's going to be money that we're going to make. It's going to be fun. Okay, it's fun for me. Maybe not so much fun for her. It's more stress for her probably than what she wants to care to admit. Actually, she admits it quite a bit, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, that's beside the point. Let's get back to this. So, I had some seed money to start this whole operation that we have now four years planning. And we've since paid that back. So it's basically a loan that I took from ourselves, right? A little bit of fun money. So if you have some fun money laying around and you want to maybe kind of join in, that would be fantastic. I'm not saying it's going to work out for you. It might not work out for me, but it's going to be fun nonetheless. So, seed money for this year. I have uh, stashed away another $1,000. And we're going to try to see what we can do with our $1,000 this summer. Now, the goal here is to get ourselves into a whole new level of motorcycles. Most of the bikes I buy are going to be less than 1000 bucks. We kind of do some minor things. Get them riding, get them rolling, and then sell them for maybe $1,500, $1,600. Anyway, that's history. 
Right now, what we're going to do is, what are we going to do this year, 2024? Well, that's going to come with a story, kind of tell you a little bit how I got my seed money. So, I'm going to attempt to write on this. I'm not a good teacher, or at least I'm not good at writing on a chalkboard. And I've got my notes. I don't really need them. I've lived it. So I'm going to try to get up here as high as I can, because we're going to keep this for the season, too, as we add to this. To get down here, I'm going to write what my goal by hits, what I'm trying to get to. All right, so we started with a 1989 CBR 600 that we got for, that's right, for free. Now, free bikes aren't always free. The story behind this bike, a buddy of mine lived in the Chicago area, was moving to Texas, had this bike for 15, 16 years. Most of that time, it was decommissioned. And like you said, that's not coming with us. So he knew I kind of tinkered around with this, asked me if I wanted it. I said, yeah, sure. He's like, if you want to come and get it, it's got to be gone by this day. So, hop in the truck, grab a trailer, ran down there. It was five and a half hours, took a whole day, took a lot of gas. So already this bike is not free. But that's going to be something that we don't necessarily take an account for. So we got a free bike. We had that guy for about a year and a half. Really started thinking, ah, oh, I might start working on that thing. So before we dove into it, not knowing what was wrong with it, we had the opportunity on, found on Facebook to, to, mind you, to 1989. CDR 600s that we got for $500. All right, one of those was running, one of them wasn't. They also came with a surplus of seats. I'm not sure why that was, but two bikes came with five seats. Yeah, okay, we'll deal with that. So now we've got uh, hopefully a riding, a running riding titled bike with a running riding titled bike and a non-running bike. So lots of parts to be able to make one. That was the plan. Basically this was the best condition, the free one, cosmetically, so we we're gonna to try to fix that one up and that would be our fun. Now why a 1989 CBR 600? Well, when I was growing up, I had a 1993 FCR 600. So not the same thing, but still rock it. And I'm getting old, so I thought that would be a little bit of nostalgia to kind of get the old juices rolling. Anyway, that sat in the back corner for a long time until one day I had a guy, I posted him up um, for sale. And I had a guy reach out to me and say, hey, I'm interested in that, but what do you want to do for a trade? I'm like, I'm not into trades. I like to trade for dollars, not for more motorcycles. But we did this. We made a trade. And we traded all these bikes for... A 1982 Honda Goldwing Aspen Cade and a 1981 Yamaha. I don't know if I spell Yamaha right. Ooh, that makes a huge mess. Well, that's a disaster. Oh my God, it's just like a chalkboard. As soon as you make a mess, everybody knows we don't want a mess. Oh well, we've got one now. 81. I'm just gonna call it Yamaha because I don't really know what it is. It's some chopped up, bobbery looking thing that um, somebody had a plan, but it wasn't a very good one. All it does is leak oil all over my floor. So I've made arrangements. We're going to sell that bike for a whopping 40 bucks. A scrapper's going to come and get him. So that's going to go. But so back, back to the story. Traded three bikes, two bikes. And ha just so happens one week later, I get a call from my brother. He says, hey, here's a 1993 Honda Goldwing we're going to call it an interstate. 
that's on an auction and the price that it's going for is only 184 bucks. And it's only 30 minutes left in the auction. So I'm like, huh, that's pretty fun. I've never been on a motorcycle on an auction before. So quickly signed up to be part of the auction. Boom, $10 bid would make the, the bid go to me. So here I am, about 31 minutes left of an auction with a holding bid of $194 for a 1983 Honda Goldwing. And we won. So now all of a sudden our three bikes turn back into three bikes, two gold wings and a Yamaha. Okay, so if you follow the channel at all, you've known that we kind of made a video about all the bikes I had. They were included in that, even the Yamaha. We talked about him a little bit. And we talked about how bad this 1983's gas tank was. And we tried to get it running. We did get it to go. We got it to run on spray. And they're big. And I'm really trying to clean out the garage for this season. So on a whim, I spotted a bike that I was kind of interested in. The guy said interested in trades. I took some pictures of this, sent it to him. He's like, hmm, not really interested in those. But I already had all the pictures. So I just posted them up on Facebook. <laughs> The wild thing is about Facebook, you just never know what's going to happen. And I had more interest in those bikes than I've had in any of the bikes that I've ever tried to sell. And so here we go. We got offer here, we got an offer here. I've kind of concluded that I'm going to make a sale with, with the guy. It's not a very large sale. It's going to be just for the two gold wings for 900 bucks. I mean, that's profit, right? We've got three, we got 500. We've got $194, so we're, we're breaking even. 194, 694 bucks. Actually, we're making money. So I'm gonna go for it. And the guy, guy says, I'm I'm just a part parts man. I'm just gonna take the bikes and part them out. I'm like, I don't care what you do with them. If you want to come and get them, that's great. So this was on a Saturday, and he said, Let me, I'm out of town, but I, I'm in a travel mode. So if I'm around, I'll, I'll swing back on Sunday afternoon, I'll pick them up. I'm like, all right, perfect. So I, I kind of thought I had them sold to him. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I get a, a message from on Facebook saying, hey, what are you thinking about trading for me? And I'm like, huh. Now, before I write that up there, what we traded for, that's the deal that we made. And that's the bike then that we're going to use as our seed money. And... I never thought I would even want one of these, but it's pretty cool. So, here it is. We then traded, basically, this one we're going to sell. We've already made that deal for 40 bucks. I still have it, but we're going to sell that in the morning. For a 1978 C. 70 Deluxe. Well, and that's also a Honda, in case you didn't know. If I could write today, that'd be great. And it's sitting right there. So, cue the music. Let's check this thing out. something else and it's got a tore up seat but I mean seriously how cool is that I've never had a moped before ever and that thing is pretty neat it's got the high load gear it runs it rides it's even got Japanese tires I mean 
I don't know what we're gonna make on that. First thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna get it cleaned up. And um, I might know a guy who has a seat and one second. It has a couple other things that it's gonna need. So anyway, that's gonna be a lot of fun. And where that's gonna get us is we're gonna over here on this other side, we have as high as I can reach, seed money. Right? There's our seed money. One thousand dollars. Okay? That's kind of what we're starting with. And that's going to give us a little bit of room because we're at 500 plus this was 194. That was a trade for all that. So we're into this for $694 minus $40. So we're at $674 that we need to take away from our thousands. We've got a few dollars to kind of fix this thing up. And then we're going to try to sell it. Once we sell it, we'll add it to the list of what we traded for or sold to replace to buy to continue this plan. And then we'll put our value here. Now I told you at the beginning, I have a goal bike that I, I want. And there's actually there's two. We're gonna put two down here because I don't right now they're for sale on marketplace. Who knows if they're if those particular ones will last. We're gonna write them down specifically for those. But I don't know. And you guys might think I'm crazy, but I kind of alluded to this before the start of this whole thing up here. My heritage when I started this was, we, I started with a 67 Triumph that was a chopper, and then we went to sport bikes, and I was on sport bikes for quite a while. And I'm gonna be 50 this year. Oh, God, 50 this year. Um, and I kind of want to just experience that one more time. Um, so here they are. We need to get to about 6,500 bucks. That's the goal. And if we get to that high, the bikes that I'm looking for right now, they're for sale. One is actually 6,500. The other one's a little bit less, but is a 2000 Honda RC51. And the other bike is a 2002 Aprilia Mille. I've never seen in real life, touched, listened to, heard run, sat on any either of these bikes. They just look really badass to me. And I'm thinking that that'd be so much fun to ride on. Both of these are B twin super bikes, which again, a little bit different than this, an inline four, the way that makes noise, the way it revs, the way it rides. I'm, I know what that feels like. No idea what that's gonna be like, but I wanna find out. So this is my plan. 2024, let's do that up on the way top. We can get there. 2024, seed money. Uh, guys, 2024 is gonna be a heck of a season. I can't wait to put this plan to action. It's gonna be so much fun. And up here in Minnesota, it's like people are already trying to sell their bikes like it's May. And it's only February. So I know we've had an unprecedentedly warm winter, but still, it's only February. Give us a few more months to buy some bikes for cheap. But I was talking about this plan with my buddy Eric down at Motorcycle Rewind. And he's got this great plan to maybe join in on this. And I think if Eric was with me, what? Is Eric on the phone? Hey, dude. Yeah, sure, take it away. Hold on, let me put you on speaker. So, I'm in. I'm doing it. I'm doing this trade up thing. I'm going to do all these trading up to motorcycles. My plan is to start with 500 smackaroos, start with $500, and end up at the Meekum Auction 2025 in Las Vegas. With a handful of cash and see what we end up with. What I started with was 500 bucks and I bought a 1970 Honda SL 350K1. And it came with a CL350 KND Panther gold tank. That is beautiful. 
and a, an ATC 110 roller. All that for 500 bones. The good thing is I've already sold the SL350 K1. I sold it for $1,500. I spent another $150.34 on it. So I'm good on that, but I also sold the Candy Panther Gold Tank for $200. So 500 bucks, you take off another 150, so I'm in, I'm in it at 1550 right now is what I have. That's the money I have to move forward. Now I'm looking for the next one. I think I already have it found, but you have to wait to see. So, Mike, I'll talk to you later. All right, bud, yeah, anytime. No worries, no problem. All right, guys, so with that being said, little interruption from our good buddy Eric at Motorcycle Rewind. We all love him. That guy is like a genius when it comes to finding these old bikes and fixing them up. You can't go wrong watching his channel. That being said, guys, I hope you like this video. <laughs> I know it's a lot of me talking in front of a whiteboard and hope that I can kind of make that fun. But um, anyway, we'll see you guys in the next one. <sighs> the heck of a plan. I hope it works.